Hi, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live. My name is Avani Miles. I am a student success coordinator at Evolve 502, and I'm here with Jenny Sawyer, the executive director of admissions at the University of Louisville. So we are going to talk about today about applying and attending the University of Louisville. But before we dive in, I want to let anyone viewing right now know that we want to interact with you. And uh, we'd like for when you pop in to give us a wave, give us a shout, ask any questions that you have and um, anything that you're thinking about. Just let us know. We want this to be an engaging conversation. So, um, oh, and also please consider to uh, share out with your friends, family and students or any anyone that this could be helpful for so that they can get in on the conversation as well. But uh, for those of you joining us who haven't heard of us or from us before, I'm going to go ahead and get into who I am and Evolve 502 and what we do. So as I mentioned, I'm with Evolve 502 and our work surrounds working with public and private agencies to support students to be successful in school, career and in life. And as a student success coordinator, along with the student success manager, Kanina Porter, had to give her a shout out. But uh, what we do is we work with seniors in JCPS to develop college and career plans, as well as assist them with the resources and wraparound supports that they may need to be successful. So um, thinking um, back in March, when COVID-19 started to cause many uh, campus and school closures, we have many of the amazing students that we work with began to have a lot of questions around the uncertainty of what the college going process is gonna be like for them now with everything changing. So Jenny and I are going to address a lot of the questions we're hearing directly from our students. Um, we know regardless of what part um, students are at in the college application process that they're eager to get information and we are here to talk about that today. So uh, I'm gonna ask Janice questions as I just mentioned, and uh, she will be able to provide important information for future U of L students and students that are still figuring it out. So Jenny, um, I'd like to thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm super excited to chat with you. And especially because I am a University of Louisville grad. So um, I was class of 2016 for my undergrad and I'm currently in a master's program there. So it's, it's always nice to be around a fellow Cardinal. But um, enough of me talking. <laughs> I'd like to give you a chance to introduce yourself and let everyone know what you do. So my name is Jenny Sawyer. Um, again, I'm the director of admissions at the University of Louisville. I've been there for a very long time. I'm also an alum. Um, I have three daughters that are alum, but I have been blessed um, over the last 30 some odd years to lead the university's um, mission, the part of their mission that really talks about access uh, talks about student success and talks about, um, you know, getting the word out and helping students really access um, the University of Louisville. As, as much as I want to talk about U of L today, I really want to sing a message about the fact that, um, you know, how important it is for students to find the right place, um, particularly amongst everything that, with everything going on, to find the right place to be in school this fall um, and to know that there's still lots of options out there. And now before, um, you know, now in the next month or two is really the time to finalize those plans um, to still have conversations in case your plans need to change. Uh, and also, you know, maybe we have some um, some juniors um, on the on the line where we can uh, are, are watching us today where we can talk a little bit about how they can best use the summer uh, as they as they really get into the, um, you know, the, the kind of the meat of their college search process. Right. Thank you. I'm glad that you mentioned juniors, especially because sometimes um, they can get left out of these kind of conversations. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, but just getting right into it. Uh, first thing I want to ask you is how is the University of Louisville uh, currently adjusting to this COVID-19 pandemic to support um, fall 2020 students or future students? So we are, um, you know, we have really never closed. So we still, through the end of the term, we had um, over 2,700 students who still lived on campus um, in all of our apartments. Um, and then we accommodated other students who did not have a place to go. We kept the library open. Uh, we kept the student activity center open. Um, we even offered the library as a place for um, high school students to go take their AP exams in case they had issues with Wi-Fi or issues with, you know, a, a place of um, not having a good place without disruptions to take their AP exams. So we've really tried to, with all the safety precautions in place, to stay open. 
Um, and uh, but the majority of our workforce has worked remotely. Um, so, but we've continued to offer services. We've continued to offer virtual appointments. Um, our tutoring center, um, you know, has continued to offer virtual tutoring. Um, the we launched our virtual orientation um, on Tuesday. And today we have, I believe, 169 new freshmen who do adv did advising appointments today. Um, oh, and during that advising appointment, we'll actually register for their fall classes. Um, we we um, transitioned all of our summer classes to online. Um, and so we've had a, a huge increase in the number of students that are taking advantage of that. I, I do think that, unfortunately, some of that may be due to the fact that you know, we have more students who um, are without summer jobs, so maybe they have some more time. Um, mm -hmm. So they're using it as an opportunity to catch up. But I also think just by doing it online, we've got some students um, who are at home or they're working remotely and they feel like that's giving them the flexibility to take some additional classes um, this summer. But we're planning to reopen um, classes on August the 17th, um, um, open housing. Um, you know, we're we're make we're in the we're in the midst of making all those final decisions about what the academic experience will look like, what housing will look like, what food and dining services will look like, um, what types of requirements we'll have on campus and, and, and things of that nature. We're going to reopen offices um, on July the 6th. So we're making those plans right now. In fact, that's my next meeting um, is to really talk about how do we accommodate um, you know, starting to bring students back into campus for meetings, for one-on-one -on -one appointments. Um, you know, students come on campus a lot in July and August to take care of business. Um, so how do we begin to offer that in person safely, but how do we also continue to offer that uh, virtually for those students that need that and those families that need that or parents possibly that need that? Awesome. Uh you already hopped into what I was going to ask you next about um, how classes would proceed fall 2020. So the plan is for them to proceed in person, correct? Yeah. So we're going to all, all the classes will be required to have at least 25% be hybrid. And so by that means um, that there'll be a combination of some of the learning that will be done um, remotely and some of the, uh, the, the learning that will be done face to face. And okay. so we are moving some more classes online, but the, the faculty are really being um, instructed to really focus um, continuing to offer um, first year classes, particularly um, the, in that hybrid model. So with always having a component of face to face, mm -hmm. um, we know how important it is, uh, particularly for first year students. And, you know, we serve a lot of first generation students too, to really make um, um, to have that, you know, that connection with a faculty member and a connection with their peers face to face um, in that first in that first year. All right. So um, in terms of other than the hybrid model you discussed, what other things can you tell us about the uh, safety precautions UofL is taking to proceed in um, fall 2020? So, um, you know, so some of it is the things that I think are a little bit unique um, and, and some of these things we have not made final decisions, you know, official decisions on, but we're considering. So um, we are considering uh, requiring flu shots. Um, okay. you know, so as, a, as a member of the broader Louisville community, we want to really play our part as a, as a large member of the, universe, of the local community uh, to really minimize any flu outbreak. Uh, this year and how that might, you know, put an additional burden on the hospitals um, and on our, and our on our medical community. Um, so we are um, we want to be in a position, you know, the university because of its health systems and because of its research, uh, we are in a unique position to um, to be able to provide testing. Um, and although I do not believe we will require testing of everyone, we want to make testing available to anyone. Um, who believes they've been exposed, who is showing symptoms, um, you know, to have um, that in place. Um, we are considering what we're going to do in the area of tracing uh, to help be able to identify hotspots that might appear, you know, on campus um, mm -hmm. and to be able to effectively, you know, be proactive um, in that. Um, 
we are um, in, in the process of installing plastic shields um, so that when we reopen on July the 6th, all our reception areas on campus will have plastic, you know, we'll pl have plastic shields. Um, identifying additional space uh, that that where there can be better physical distancing. We're actually made a very conscious decision to use the term physical distancing instead of social distancing because mm -hmm. we want people to continue to be social <laughs> and right. we make new connections and um, get a little bit of outside of their comfort zone and all of those things that we that we talk about to our students. Um, so we've consciously uh, pivoted, which I think pivot must be one of the COVID-19 keywords, right? <laughs> uh, we're pivoting to using the term physical distancing with our students. Um, so anyway, so, you know, and trying to then for all of those policies, look at where we need to have provisions for exclusions. Um, you know, so masks, so students will be required to wear masks um, in most, in most circumstances. Um, and, you know, we're, we're doing special, um, uh, special things with the dining hall, special things with the residence hall, all of those types of things. Where every, every student is going to get a mask. Mm -hmm. uh, every faculty and staff member will be provided a, a washable mask. So that'll be a um, something that we will provide for everyone. And uh, along with the, with the ability to have uh, the flu shots given by the university. Thank you, uh, Jenny. I'm glad that you mentioned that you still want your the students at the University of Louisville to be social. Because imagine during this time with people have masks on and they're being tested, that that could bring up a lot of anxiety and discomfort and stress. And we really do need to be social during this time. So I really appreciate that you pointed that out for um, students and maybe that they can find some comfort in that. That yes. There are precautions that are being taken to stay safe, but also still encouragement to stay social and meet new people and, and try to make college um, what at least we thought it would be before. All this you know, we're working really hard to be sensitive to um, technology access. So as a part of virtual orientation, we're, we've launched a survey of all of our entering students to really make sure that they know that we, we have a feel for our, do we have students coming in who don't have a laptop, you know, maybe during their senior year at home as they transition to non-traditional instruction, they were sharing a device in their family. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if there's income loss in a family, you know, maybe that laptop that you were going to get for high school graduation, maybe that's not a reality right now for your family. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're working really hard to identify who are the students that need that, you know, that need that type of support from the university. Uh, you know, we're really proud of our Cardinal Cupboard, our, our food pantry. Um, and that is, again, that's one of the resources that we have kept open this entire time. We've kept our food pantry open and we've been packed with students using our food pantry. Um, and so, you know, we want to make sure that that we have, um, that we are really well stocked in our food pantry in the fall because we know that there are going to be students who have had less opportunities to earn income. Um, over the course of the summer. And so those things, those types of resources are going to be needed more than ever. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, especially with students that I personally work with. Um, a lot of them that were working before aren't anymore or can't, and maybe their parents or their families aren't, and their lives have just really changed. So it's good to know that, that UofL is working to support students in that way. Um, but moving, shifting a little bit in this interview to um, admissions specifically, I heard, I believe it was on uh, one of the news outlets that um, the requirements have shifted for ACT and SAT for um, students applying at, at the University of Louisville. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it kind of happened in a few different phases. So um, we already had a group that was working on making some recommendations about the use of test scores. Um, mm -hmm. And when COVID-19 broke out, we had just turned in those recommendations. And so we immediately, when the um, when the spring test scores tests got canceled, we immediately decided that for this coming this current fall, fall 2020, mm -hmm. that we would allow a student to apply without test scores, and we would require some additional documents at them and review and make decisions, and and very honestly, predominantly based on grades and curriculum at this point in time, without a lot of planning time, right? Mm -hmm. and, so, and, and that we would accept unofficial documents, which we typically don't do for, with first year students. You know, if students were not in a position to, to order their test scores or to quickly get a high school transcript, 
um, depending on the size of their school district or something of that nature. So, so we've tried to be as flexible as possible. Mm -hmm. um, that then led to a conversation about, you know, if we were going to have a formal um, discussion on campus about going test optional on a permanent basis, did we not want to do, go on and do that for fall 21, knowing that students were going to have less opportunities to test? Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, so even though like the June ACT has not been canceled by ACT, we know that there are significant test centers across the country um, that will not be offering the June ACT, which again, removes a date that right. a student can. Um, and so we made that decision to go test optional. So we are in the early stages of, of, of seeing um, what that looks like. The most important thing for a high school senior to, or high school rising senior to know right now um, is that when they apply to the University of Louisville, our application for fall of 21 will come out on August 1st. They have an opportunity to answer a question that says, do you want the university to consider your ACT or SAT when evaluating your application? And if they answer no to that, even if they've sent us a test score, when we go review their application, we will not look at that test score. And then they will be required to submit some additional credentials. Um, but you know what, one of the things I do want to stress um, with that, and um, you know, the university has what I always refer to as a college ready admissions policy. So we admit any student with a 20 on the ACT and a 2.5 GPA. And so really, to be very honest, for students who meet that minim minimum threshold, there's no reason to go test optional in my mind, okay? Um, but it's those students that do not feel that the ACT uh, best reflects their ability to do college work are the students that want to consider going test optional. Um, so anyway, so we're excited that we're going to roll that out. We start our committee work next week to really be able to give students uh, a little bit, a better picture of that. But for meanwhile, any student who at the last minute is needing to change their plans, um, we are we are doing that for fall 2020 students also. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. Um, shifting a little bit, because we did talk about um, some of the requirements for students that are trying to apply, but what would you um, suggest for students that have already gotten in? What does that process look like in terms of orientation or um, sign up for housing or just how those processes may have changed? So um, the processes, the, the main process that has really changed is the virtual orientation. So it used to be that you would pay your deposit. OK, you would come to an orientation session. And on those two days that you were on campus, you would meet people. You would spend a lot of time with our upper class students, what we call who are we call our SOSers. You would get advised. You would learn about student organizations. You would learn about programs and support services on campus. All of those things. You would walk through what your bill is going to look like, how you're going to pay your bill, how your financial aid goes from being this thing you see to, you know, how it gets over to pay your bill, right? How all that works. And so we had to, in a very short amount of time, hi, Candace. We had to uh, we had to move that to a virtual process. Um, so it in no way replaces the amazing 48 hours or 36 hours that our students used to spend on campus, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so this first step of virtual orientation is really meant to just prepare the student for their advising appointment and to give them the basics. And then throughout the rest of the summer, we will be rolling out Facebook Lives, Instagram Lives, events like this, mm -hmm. um, things for parents, uh, things for families, um, uh, group meetings, small group meetings um, of like-minded types of students, students that are maybe studying in the same area or have common interests, mm -hmm. to, to, to try and in some way mimic that piece of orientation that really was about connections and and understanding the culture and the environment of the university, which is hard to do in a video. Right. Um, although Dr. Benaputi does a darn good job in her welcoming videos and her <laughs> welcome to the students where she does share her cell phone number. Uh, oh. So that's one of the 
that's one of the perks of being a University of Louisville student. That I think in the very first video of virtual orientation, Dr. Bendapudi shares her personal cell phone number. So it's her commitment to make sure that if students uh, get in an emergency situation or are totally frustrated by the bureaucracy of the university, they know they can reach out to her. Yeah. She always says it's for emergencies, though. She <laughs> wants them to, to try and, you know, try and navigate the system and, um, and, and work things out for themselves first. Thank you, Jenny. I am glad that you touched on uh, the connection piece because working with the students that uh, I've worked with and just students in general, young people in general, needing to stay connected throughout times like this is super important. So I'm glad that you touched on that. Um, what resources are available or offered for students who need support uh, once they've had, uh, once they've been accepted and still have questions? So, so one of the things that, um, you know, we do and we promote in all of our communications to students is an ability for them to connect with the admissions counselor that is assigned to their high school. And we really do like to think of that person as kind of their one stop shop. So they get updated every week on what's going on with housing. Uh, they have access to people's financial aid information. Uh, they know when to refer people to one of our financial aid counselors that works directly with first time students. So that's actually the best place to start. OK, um, because you know, you can spend all the time you want in a, in a program. You can spend all the time you want, um, you know, on a website. But there's nothing better than having a conversation with someone where they can prompt you. They can learn a little bit more about your unique, unique circumstances and they can uh, connect. Then they can make that connection with you to the right resources for you to help you be successful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another follow up question for that. Um, for students who have questions um, in terms of admissions and financial aid or just any of uh, anything that comes up as a new student, are they to uh, go about that process you just mentioned or are they allowed to physically come to campus? And uh, they will not we will not be physically open for campus until July 6th. OK, so at that point, they're able to um, go to the financial aid office or meet with someone. Yes. Um, OK, OK, good. But, you know, everybody's doing virtual appointments right now. Okay. And for instance, every Thursday night, we have a financial aid presentation for admitted students. Um, so if an admitted student wants to know a little bit more, or have an opportunity in a chat room type of our environment to like ask our associate director of financial aid, Micah Bood, questions that mm -hmm. is being offered every Thursday night. All you have to do is go on our virtual experiences website. Maybe we can pop that up there for a second. Um, so scroll down just a little bit. Keep going, keep going. Oh, there we go. Virtual presence pre visits. Oh, scroll up. So right there, th those, nope. There we go. We're getting there. Right there. So those are all the different. So there's, so there's presentations going on a couple times a week for admitted students. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's oh, if students that are interested in the UPS program, uh, there are programs, there are, there are presentations going on two or three times a week if you want to learn more about how to work at UPS and have your tuition paid. And then under where it says admitted students, you will get the, 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 the place to sign up for those Thursday night financial aid presentations for admitted students. And then on June the 11th, we will kick off, we will start to kick off some events for families and parents. Um, with a, an event kind of like this called Ask Anything, and it will actually be our student orientation leaders um, being available to answer any kind of question that a parent would have um, mm -hmm. to hear the current student perspective about life at the University of Louisville. And then in early July, we will have a special COVID-19, some special COVID-19 um, presentations where families can ask their specific questions about how what you know, what the new normal is going to look like. Um, what are those requirements going to be? How do you interpret some of those new regulations and, and requirements? Uh, what is going to be provided? You know, the, Mike Mar Dean Martis, who is our vice president for student affairs, will be there answering all the housing questions about move in mm -hmm. and um, increased cleaning of the residence halls and the restrooms and things of that nature. So those are some events that people have to look, you know, I don't know if you're looking forward to those things, but those are those are things that we're going to put out there um, um, to to assist 
to assist people. Um, you know, one of the other things um, um, that we're doing for local students is, um, although we're not formally making an announcement, but I'll, I'll make it to this group, is we know that there are going to be local students who registered and signed up for housing, who now find themselves in a financial predicament because of a family's loss of income. Uh, and so we are encouraging those students to reach out to the financial aid office or to the admissions counselor assigned to their high school to talk through that, to see what we can do to get them canceled and get them uh, living you know, at home with a parent without any type of cancellation fee related to that. OK, so we, we're going to try and be as flexible as possible um, if we can determine that it was really something related to COVID-19 that is 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 requiring them at this late date to change their housing plans. We want people to live on campus. We think it provides a great, did you live on campus, Imani? I did, I did. I lived at Kerr's at one point and then I lived at Betty Johnson. And are you from Louisville? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you know that even if you're from Louisville, it's, it's wonderful when you get that opportunity to live on campus, but Absolutely. we know that there's going to be a subset of our local population that want to live on campus. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, unfortunately this year, that is going to be financially difficult for families. Right. And it's good to know that um, actually, oh, we have a question. Hey, Miranda. Um, so, Jenny, what suggestions do you have for juniors thinking about attending college and what are ways they engage with you? They can engage with UofL early on. So I'm glad you mentioned that earlier. And now we have an opportunity to talk about it. So we rolled out on Friday a new self-guided tour because we know people are starting to get out now. We mm -hmm. know that several years in a row, we've been ranked the most beautiful college in Kentucky by Travel and Leisure Magazine. And so, and and that campus has changed dramatically. Amani, even since you've Absolutely. been gone, right? right? <laughs> uh, we broke ground. Well, we didn't technically break ground because of COVID-19, but we have a new residence hall that will open in fall 21. And there's pictures of that all over campus right now. Uh, yeah, the cultural center is gone. Oh, that I did not know. It is gone. And there will be a new uh, cultural and equity center um, on the first floor of the new residence hall that will have its own outside entrance. So it'll be all new space and it'll be uh, what you would have known as the cultural center, what will be the women's center and will be the LGBT center all in one space together. Uh, those services, uh, those, those offices that provide services to those students. Mm -hmm. um, but so there's a great self-guided tour. Um, if you come between 10 and three, they'll actually be one of our student ambassadors there to greet you. Um, student Activity Center and the Extram Library are open. So there will be some buildings that you can go into. Um, but we encourage people to get out, take a stroll on campus, uh, follow along on your phone if you want to see what you're looking at and what some of the, you know, what happens and what buildings on campus. Um, and the bookstore is going to start be opening every day from 10 to 3, starting on Monday. So if you want to go in the bookstore and get some Cardinal gear or um, things like that, we encourage people to start to come to campus. Um, in addition to that, we uh, three days a week um, and on Saturdays, we have uh, presentations for high school rising seniors. Um, so they can sign up for those. Um, and that is an admissions counselor giving that presentation along with a current student who at the end, because you're not going out on a tour and having that chance to interact. Um, mm -hmm. We have a, a one of our current students who does kind of a, a, a chat back and forth with the audience um, to answer questions and just to talk a little bit about their experiences. Oh, thank you, that was very helpful. And thanks for asking that question, Miranda. Um, and then there's just some videos, virtual tours, or academic brochures. Mm -hmm. um, um, like I said, you can juniors, if they want to start now to find out who's the counselor assigned to their high school, and they just want to have a one-on-one a -on -one conversation, they can do that. And then the engineering school and the business school are having um, virtual presentations also already. So all of that is on that virtual experiences page that we showed you. Awesome. So all of our students at, at any grade can continue or start and continue to engage. So that's great and what I wanted to know. Um, Next question I have for you is regarding deadlines. So with COVID-19 and all the, the updates and changes going on, um, how have your deadlines in terms of um, applications and that whole process, how has that changed or has it changed? So we are still accepting applications. We're still awarding scholarships. 
So okay. uh, we're in a position financially to still do that for a little bit longer. So if a student's pl plans are changing, uh, they can apply. Um, they should typically, once they apply, um, um, or if they just started an application or if they were admitted and had not deposited, uh, they can go on and do that now. And then, you know, we're getting in that crunch time, right? Mm -hmm. um, whereas, um, you know, I think one of the things I would say is if you're even thinking about changing your plans right now, go on and log in to FAFSA.gov and send us your FAFSA data. So make that your first priority because that does take a little bit longer to get. It takes three days to get to us and get loaded in our computer mm -hmm. and then fill out your application so that while you're talking to someone, they can be talking about your academics and whether or not you're going to get accepted to the university. But they can also be talking about whether or not the University of Louisville is a good financial fit for you. Oh, hey, Marlon. All right, let's go. It says, what resources or support? Are you providing students around online learning how to make the most of it, and et cetera? That's a great question. So online learning. So Marlon, I, I'm, I'm so glad you asked that question. No, I really, I'm not happy you asked that question because, wow, that is the one question I'm not prepared to answer. Um, you know, we, we've, we did an assessment at the end of spring from, to our students about um, their experiences with that last three weeks. Um, I, I'll be very honest, and I've probably been in meetings and discussions where we've talked about how that's going to happen. We do not do that in the, virtual, in the current virtual orientation because when we launched and did all the content for our virtual orientation, we had not made a decision about all the courses having a hybrid component. But um, we, we know that there are things related to COVID-19 and related to how we're going to transition the academic experience as soon as those decisions are made, that we will have to roll out some additional things for our incoming students. And I'm sure that will be one of them. I believe the other place where that learning will take place, every single first time freshman takes a one hour introduction to L type of course. It, it varies a little bit based on the academic unit you were being in, but that that content and that transition to being in hybrid classes will be integrated into those courses. Typically, a first time freshman, unless they're an adult student coming back to an online program, typically a first time freshman does not take an online course in their first semester. And our goal is to really minimize how much of that is for our first time freshmen. But Marlon, that, that is a great question. And I'm going to I'm going to take that back for further discussion. Thanks, Marlon. All right. Um, so this kind of brings me to um, one of my last questions is that what advice or encouragement do you have for our 2020 graduates who um, I actually just saw a graduation, a virtual graduation yesterday for Iroquois High School, just one of the schools I work with. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, what what advice or encouragement do you have for um, students that are hoping to transition to the University of Louisville or just considering post secondary in general? So I, I like to tell students to do three things. OK, so first of all, I want them to find a person. And when I and so whether you want to refer to that as a mentor or just someone you go to for help but find a person on the college campus where you're gonna be, who is your go-to person? Even if it's that person who just directs you to the right, makes that connection for you. But as you do, whatever your orientation or the, the various programs at your campus that you're going to provide you over the next few months, use that as an opportunity to find someone, okay? Secondly, identify a peer whether that be somebody you went to high school, some somebody you meet on social media this summer that's going to the same school as you, maybe it's gonna be your roommate, but find that peer that you figure out, doesn't necessarily wanna study the same things, but they're kind of in that same frame of mind that you are about your entering college and your desire to be successful. And develop a support system with a peer 
And the third thing is identify one program service, extracurricular activity, leadership opportunity that you say to yourself in that first month of school, I'm going to become a part of this or I'm going to use this. And for some people, that's just going to tutoring from the get go. OK, for some people, that's becoming a part of student government or it may be going to services or Bible study at the Interface Center. But find something where you can make going back, Amani, to you loving that word connection. Um, each, each one of those things will build a connection for you. And if you do each one of those things, you'll have three connections. Um, and those three connections will help build a foundation for you to be successful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jenny. I, I know and I can uh, imagine some of the students that I've worked with personally that could really, really hear that. And sometimes you can sell, tell students things and they need to hear it multiple times for it to really settle in. But I absolutely would say the same thing. And I appreciate you offering that advice to our students. So the other um, thing real quickly, and Imani, you may get more fun out of this than um, than our than our entering students do. But um so over the summer, our cardinal guides, our cardinal ambassadors, have mm -hmm. been sharing on Insta on Instagram um, or on our Insta story. They have been um, sharing just every week. There's a different topic, and they give their you know their one minute little talk about you know how to get involved or how to be successful in the classroom and whatever. So this week we let young alums take over that advice. And so there are about 30 alums who do about 30 second to 60 second pieces of advice about if, if I could reinvent my freshman self, this is what I wish I had done, or this is what I did that helped me. Um, and it's a great fun watch. Amani, you'll probably know half the people. Right, um, yeah. That are doing it. So anyway, I don't know, maybe you did one. Did you do one? No, I didn't, but that sounds exciting. Yeah. So it's um, if you go to Instagram and you look at um, forget what it's called. It might be called Cardinal Cardinal Glance, Cardinal Glance or something of that nature. Um, but anyway, it's a it's a it's a fun thing. And there is some really good advice. I don't know if you know O.J. Aleka, uh, but O.J. is a, a University of Louisville graduate. He is the president of the um, uh, independent colleges and universities in Kentucky organization. But his sister is a U of L alum. She's an OBGYN, and she closes the whole thing out with just some remarkable advice that I would suggest that everybody go listen to and uh, and learn something from. Absolutely, thank you for sharing that. And um, we're going to have this video saved to our uh, YouTube. And <laughs> good idea, Candice. <laughs> But uh, we're going to have this video saved on our Facebook and our YouTube, and um, hopefully students will be able to get that information and we can, what, what did you say that was called again at a glance or, um, or we can get that information and post it later. So yeah. students have it. I'm but, sorry. I'm, no, you're I'm fine. I walked at like 2.30 in the morning, so. <laughs> but it's what something we can definitely add and save here. So It's called Cardinal Glance, the uh, Cardinal Guidance. I knew it was a G word. Cardinal Guidance, uh, alumni version. Oh, I'm definitely going to have to check that out and, and pass it along for sure. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to uh, talk about that I haven't necessarily asked you or mentioned today? So I do want to make a pitch for the June 2nd um, college fair. So I know you all, along with GLI and Live in Lou, um, are sponsoring a college fair, a virtual college fair on Tuesday night at 630. Um, so any local students who you're looking at me like you didn't know this was happening. Uh, you said Tuesday. <laughs> I'm it's Tuesday, to June that. 2nd. I'm almost positive it's Tuesday. Um, maybe Marlon will pop back on if I've got the wrong date. Um, I want to say it's Tuesday at 630 um, on Facebook. And it is an opportunity for local students who may now be needing to reconsider their plans, learn a little bit about what are all their options in their backyard. Absolutely. I believe, um, I believe it's Tuesday. Oh, yeah, Marlon, uh, I'm sure can pop up or will let us know for sure. 
Um, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Or? You know, we, we, if anyone's still, like I said, reconsidering their plans or just not at a place where they're ready to make a final decision, we just want you to know we're there to have conversations with you and to help you make the right decision, which may be, you know, going to the JCTC. You know, we have an amazing partnership with JCTC called Ultra. We have four mm -hmm. advisors down there. So um, just helping people find the right place so they can be a successful student in the fall. All right, absolutely. Um, Jenny, I wanna thank you again for joining me today and addressing the questions and concerns we've been hearing from students. And um, I'd also like to thank those of you that have joined us live and have been in the comments and engaging with us. And if you aren't already, make sure to follow us at Evolve 502 on all of our social channels. So that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you'd like to revisit this later or um, share it with your friends, it'll definitely be on our Facebook and our YouTube. And if you have any more questions about the University of Louisville and the admissions process, um, please visit louisville.edu slash admissions. Yep, it's just down there right at the bottom. And um, we will also have information on um, the link to connect you with the virtual experiences and a lot of what Jenny spoke about today. So once again, uh, thank you all for joining us and thank you, Jenny, so much. And we want you all to stay safe, stay well, and we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us. Take thank care. You so much, bye bye. Okay.